Palermo FC have to go down as one of the most exciting but also volatile clubs in Italian football. Boasting former players such as Luca Toni, Paolo Dybala, and Andrea Bellotti, Palermo have played a considerable role in the development of several superstars in Serie A. Unfortunately, the club no longer plays its football in Italy's top division, currently residing in Serie C and no longer in FIFA career mode. However, due to the new create a club feature in FIFA 22, we'll be bringing Palermo back to the game and signing some of the club's most prolific players for this realistic rebuild with the goal of accomplishing something that Palermo has never done and that is to become Scudetto winners and also qualify for the UEFA Champions League. If you enjoy this sort of content make sure to like and subscribe and also feel free to leave a club suggestion in the comment section on what realistic rebuilds you want to see next. Unlike previous realistic rebuilds, we know very little about this Creative Club Palermo squad, but still went with as much realism as possible, setting the average squad age to balance, which is pretty close to the 26 and a half squad age that they have IRL. Although we will, of course, add a homegrown talent, Elia Martino, a 17-year-old striker from Italy, at a 69 overall, the five-star skill move, five-star weak foot combo. You can't ask for much more, and hopefully he can achieve similar levels of success like some of Palermo's previous strikers. With the addition of Martino, we'll also switch up the formation to a 4-2-3-1, similar to what they used in their 0-9-10 campaign, which was Palermo's best year in recent history. For board objectives, there's three that I want to talk about. Youth development, I want a few players promoted into our youth academy and hopefully play a long-term role in this rebuild. Financially, it's a big part of the club's current situation. In between changes of ownership and periods of financial disarray, it's definitely something that I wanted to incorporate into this rebuild and domestically looking to finish mid-table in Syria. We do have a tough road ahead, just seven and three quarters of a million to work with in our transfer budget, but there was only one player that I had in mind, a product of Palermo's Youth Academy. It is none other than Salvatore Sirigu. He's been on a bit of a journeyman throughout his career, playing in Italy as well as France, in addition to a few brief spells in Spain. But the good thing about signing goalkeepers that are starting to get on in age is that they're not going to cost you a lot. Just $5 million is what we had to spend to sign an 82-rated player. We will also see the departure of one of our players with Chislak leaving for Sporting for $4 million. Those funds are going to be invested straight into our Youth Academy. Considering we only had a 2-star, two 2-star two scout to begin with, we went ahead and signed this 5-star, five 5-star five scout from Portugal, going on to then establish a scouting network in Italy for the rest of the season, looking for a technically gifted player. It will be a cup fixture to kick off our season. We want to see some progress in this competition as it is a part of our domestic success. But here is the squad that we have to work with, Sirigu being the highest rated player in the starting 11. If we can withstand the first few seasons of this rebuild, we have youth on our side, some players with potential to be special. As we simulate forward to the January transfer window, we had a respectable campaign, 14th place in the league, ahead of some notable clubs like Fiorentina. And relative to some of the newly promoted teams like Venezia, who sit bottom of the table, we've done quite well. We haven't seen players like Martino see a huge rise to his rating, but fortunately, Sirigu has not dropped in his overall. That was something I was concerned about. I did go on to realize that we weren't going to meet this financial objective of reducing player wages because I had to renew contracts and things like that. So to offset that, I decided to field bids for one of our star players. Considering we've got a notable Premier League club like Chelsea expressing interest and also sending an offer above his market value, I did go on to accept that and also negotiate the fee a little bit higher. 25 million is what the London-based club had to pay as Ferro embarks on his journey in the Premier League. One of the squad veterans, Ba, also leaving the club for a small fee as he joins Alanyaspor. And in order to help out with Martino's growth, we're going to send him out on loan for the rest of the season. This is the best way to see an increase in high potential players overall. To make sure that we can keep our mid-table finish, I'm going to sign another ex-Palermo player in Javier Pastore. He was part of that 0-9-10 campaign before he left for PSG and played a huge role in the French club's rise to the top of the Ligue 1 standings. I think transfer fees are only going to go up from here. 13 million is what we needed to spend in order to bring Pastore in. But he is well worth the transfer, both for nostalgia purposes, but also if we can get one or two good seasons out of him, then I'll be content. Considering we had two big departures with Ferrero and Martino, I'm pretty happy with how the squad is looking. Sure, we do need to upgrade in some areas, but we've got the veteran leadership now, and I'm confident what the squad can do. The rest of the season didn't see too many events take place. Sometimes I'll showcase some gameplay for you guys, but in this case, it really wasn't worth it. We did see two promotions from our youth academy, a right wing back from Italy, and also a center defensive mid from Italy, both with potential in the lower 90s. Here's a look at the league table. We ended up finishing 11, so even higher up in the standings than where we were in January. The top four spots in Serie A will consist of Roma, Inter, Milan, and Juventus. Ferrero clearly played a big role in the squad's success. 19 goal contributions 
contributions, 16 of which were goals scored. And Martino fortunately did see some growth during his loan spell, a plus five by season's end. And despite failing our financial objectives, we still saw a rise in our manager rating. We're in the green at a 93. So things were looking up for season two. Our goal for season two is to make the step up and start competing for European qualification. Obviously, there are some weak points in the squad that we need to work on. We should probably keep the long-term future in mind when it comes to board objectives because for domestic success, we do need to achieve Champions League qualification within three seasons. However, with just 15 million to work with in the transfer budget, the number of signings we can make is limited. So I decided to make the most of the club's current situation, Ferrero being the club's top goal scorer and also one of the top strikers in Syria started to generate interest from other clubs. Udinese, we're looking to sign him for 13.5 million. We brought that fee up just a little bit to 15 million, also allowing Janssen to leave the club for 340,000. When it comes to these Palermo players that were part of the 09-10 campaign, we need to sign them quickly before they retire. Cavani still doing well at 35 years old and 82 overall means he has declined a little bit. That just means that his evaluation is within our budget. We had to pay 25 million. I know that seems like a lot. However, he is a proven striker, even if his rating is declining. That doesn't mean Martino will need to shift to more of a winger role. I think it is better considering his stats. He got a plus six upgrade in his rating. Also setting up a scouting network in Argentina to look for a technically gifted player. And why not send out our other scout as well as we search for a goalkeeper? Expectations were certainly high as we kick off the season with a fixture against Benevento. Here is the squad. Our attack in midfield is essentially sorted. We just need to focus on improving our defense in future transfer windows. Let's check in in January 2023. We are sixth place in Serie A, so an improvement from last season. The squad's overall ratings are kind of balancing out. Our veterans up top with Cavani and Pastore dropping by one or two in their overall, but Martino is essentially going up because he has potential to be special. We'll see the departure of three players in this January transfer window. Svensson was a rotational striker. He left for Burnley for five million. One of our backup keepers, Bozniak, heading to Malaga, for 2.75 million and another keeper in heading to Portugal and SC Braga for 2.25 million. I know it seems like we're letting a lot of our rotational players go, but that's because we will see some youth academy promotions later in the year and it will free up funds for us to sign Pazella from Parma. Left back is one of our weakest positions and he is still young enough that he should be able to hit the upper 70s, if not the lower 80s for his rating. Only having to pay 6.5 million for this transfer. Quite the deal. I think he had his contract expiring at the end of the year. And here are some of these Youth Academy promotions. Bianco is a center attacking mid from Italy, already an overall of 63. In order to make sure we have at least one backup keeper on the bench, Palumbo will be promoted to the senior squad. This will be the team that will try to achieve European qualification. Not too many other competitions to focus on as we'll simulate forward to the end of the season and the final fixture of Syria. Pretty much two different results can happen. We currently sit sixth. Inter will not be able to catch up with us because we have a four-point lead. We could, however, make the step up to Champions League because with Napoli's win in the Coppa Italia, we're essentially safe for Europa League qualification at the minimum, so it's only uphill from here. There's also some importance for the Golden Boot battle. Cavani's competing with another former Palermo player, as both him and Dybala have 21 goals. It'll also be the end of the road for Javier Prestori, retiring at the end of the season. So we'll hope for a good send up. Sampdoria are by no means an easy squad to play against. It'll be Sampdoria with the first highlight, and it's the high potential Dane Domsgaard who gets an effort on goal. Sirigu equal to it, though, has been class for us in this rebuild, not dropping too much in his overall rating and making quality stops like that consistently. But a highlight for us now is we work it from side to side. Pastore finding our homegrown talent over to Moretti. He'll send in the cross, and that would have been a very Edison Cavani-esque goal. The header going just wide, though, as we'll try the left side this time. Ujevic sending in the cross, and first-time effort from Cavani. Setting the tempo for this match and also opening up the scoring there. Create the separation between him and the defender, and on his weak foot, he is just clinical in front of goal. Of course, he's lacking the physical attributes at this point in time. Not the paciest player, but his positioning and his finishing is top quality. We're still here before the end of the first half and Sirigu continuing to make stops as we get into the second half. Domsgaard again, he created the first highlight for Sampdoria and he is going to set up Gabbiadini. The header going into the back of the net, Sirigu ended up making contact with the ball, but it wasn't enough to redirect the chance away from goal. Really anyone's match this point, but I think after Sampdoria scored that goal, the momentum certainly went their way. It'll be Gabbiadini to get a brace in the 62nd minute. Still enough time for us to potentially get back in it, but a draw won't do that much for us. So we need two goals if we want to potentially 
get that qualification for Champions League. That effort probably should have found the back of the net, especially because it was our homegrown talent. So we'll follow on this one. I'm glad that we were able to at least guarantee the fans Europa League qualification for next season. And realistically, it is the best thing for us because we still have a lot to improve in this team. We'll cover the standings and it was Napoli that ended up winning the league. Atalanta in second, Juventus in third, and Fiorentina finishing top four with Roma joining us in the Europa League for next season. Cavani did end up winning the golden boot. Insigne also getting into the conversation towards the end. PSG with a win in the Champions League final over Manchester City. RB Leipzig winning an all Europa League final over Mönchengladbach. And Wolves picking up a Europa Conference League victory over Lille. Of course, Cavani was the top goal scorer for us. 23 goals from 39 appearances. Ujevic and Martino also getting into the double digits. Romeo with a lot of assist involvement from the center midfield. Eight assists from 30 our homegrown talent Martino with 7 from 39 and Berardi another one of our midfielders joining Pastore with 6 assists look at this growth from Martino though a plus 10 in his rating granted a lot of that came from his position change at the beginning of the year but some promising players in our youth academy as well Moya already at a 70 overall in his rating but for whatever reason our manager rating plummeted this season at a 62 and in the red which is strange because we met all three objectives for the youth development which was the most important out of all of them with Pastore being the first player to retire in this rebuild there is the obvious need to address the center attacking mid position and of course our board objective I think if we can start making some progress for the domestic success and the continental success we should be in all right shape but here's a look at our Europa League group I think it is reasonable for us to advance out of the group stage as our board objective specifies and with 36 million to work with in the transfer budget we should have no problem bringing in players it's another striker that we look to sign with Andrea Bellotti, a longtime Torino player, but prior to that, he was at Palermo, spent a few seasons there on loan, and also joined the club on a permanent basis. We're going to complete this signing for roughly 35 million. He did make the transfer to Lyon in this save, but I couldn't pass up on signing such a versatile player to the squad. And it looks like our top goalkeeper youth academy prospect is ready to be promoted to the senior team. 16 years old at an overall of 63. Hopefully he can fulfill that 89 to 94 potential. This will probably be the last season for Youth Academy scouting. After this, there's really no point in promoting them because they're never going to make it into the first team or the substitutes. But we were able to send out a number of our Youth Academy players out on loan. It worked well for Martino in season one. Maybe we can achieve something similar here. But we'll be matching up against Sassuolo to kick off our Serie A campaign. Optioning to play Bolotti at the center attacking mid position. Of course, with Cavani being the top goal scorer in the league last year, there's no reason to make any changes there. A busy month of January ahead, but we'll see how we've done in the season so far. And to be honest, we slightly underperformed in the league. Ninth place, but still half a year to go to maybe move up into the top six finish. Fortunately, though, our European campaign went much better. We went unbeaten, winning all six of our matches, which means that we'll play against Hertha Berlin and the round of 16. We don't really have enough funds to sign any 80 plus overall players. So realistically, we're looking for more squad rotational players in the January transfer window. Roman Quaison will be the perfect addition. Again, we're looking for versatile players. He can play striker, left mid or center attacking mid. And considering this transfer was only 5 million, I think it was well worth the fee. Few players departing with Breno Costa heading to Boca Juniors for 2.9 million and Polish right midfielder Sefcik leaving for Mallorca for 2.35 million. Whether we can continue to make progress in the Europa League will heavily depend on if Martino can carry the team. He is by and far the best player and hopefully we can get some more supporting cast to help improve our chances of winning because in the round of 16 it was Hertha Berlin to win the away fixture 3-2. It was the exact same score line in the home fixture which means that we went to penalties and Hertha Berlin get the better of us 4-3. So it will be another Serie A match that we showcase for the gameplay in season 3. But the reason that I wanted to highlight Juventus is that they are considered our rivals in this save. And if we recall upon the 0-9-10 campaign Palermo did in fact finish above Juventus in the league table. A win here could see us leapfrog Juve in today's standings and the chance for Champions League qualification is certainly still on the cards. We need a few results to go our way, but for now, the focus is on winning, as it will be the last time Edison Cavani features in this rebuild. He's probably been our best transfer so far, and we'll see if he can make the difference for us, because we're going to need to pull off something miraculous if we want all three points. As we get into the highlights, the fans showing their appreciation there for Cavani. And as mentioned earlier in the rebuild, it's uh, always interesting to match up against Juve because they have the likes of Paulo Dybala, who we're going to look to sign at some point in this rebuild once we have the funds available. 
But the first chance falling to Juve. Saka played over the top, and I think that Siru should have done better with the chance. We did well to bring him out and close down that angle, but the English winger, who has apparently made the transfer to Syria, making the most of the opportunity. It's Locatelli who has also transferred from Sassuolo. That's a little bit better from Sirigu, keeping the match close as we get into the second half. Optioning for a few changes, it is Kwaison that we bring on. We look to sign him to add a little bit more rotation to the squad and also that versatility. And here he is on the left side. Needs to make something happen here, though. A few options in the middle, sending in the low cross. And I believe that was a shot, but ended up being more of a pass to our homegrown talent. But hey, you need to make the most of the chances you are given, and we're absolutely going to take that goal. It's Kwaison again in the last few minutes down this left-hand side. This time, the cross is going to be made with pinpoint accuracy. The lofted pass falls to Belotti, and that will be the winner as we put on a show for the home fans in what will be Cavani's final fixture here at Palermo. Those three points against Juventus ended up being the difference as we finish one point above them in the league table. Not sure what happened with Inter. They plummeted in the league table for the final two match days. Something will make up for that, though, as they win the Coppa Italia. 4-3 on penalties against Napoli. This year's Champions League winners will be Bayern München, Manchester City winning the Europa League, and Lyon, despite losing Belotti at the beginning of the year, still win the Europa Conference League. To be honest, I was surprised Cavani chose to end his career at 37 years old because he can clearly still score goals, 26 from 48 appearances. For top assists, it is, again, one of our center midfielders, Berardi, who gets 9 from 48. Domenico Morelli has done well on his brief loan spell at Sheffield United, going up plus 5 in his rating. But our plan for the board objectives went perfectly. We focused on the domestic and continental success. Did well enough to see our manager rating go up to an 80, which is right where we started, so we can push on to Season 4. Season 4 will be the first year that Palermo is in Champions League, and I feel like the squad is starting to take shape. Some difficult expectations from the board. They want us to win the league title. I'm not sure if we can pull that off yet. Of course, it is a long-term goal in this rebuild, but how about this for a Champions League group? We've got Bayern, Real Madrid, and Shakhtar Donetsk. Maybe the $44 million in our transfer budget will help us get out of the group stage, but... The top objective is to find the Edison Cavani regen, and I've talked about this in the past for my Newcastle career mode. The regens this year are something else, and they've still yet to be patched, so this is kind of leading me to believe that regens are just going to have this incredible overall rating. Maybe not the most realistic thing, but I'm going to make the most of it while it is still in the game. So this is Edison Cavani's regen. I'll leave a card in the top right of your screen if you are unfamiliar with how to find regens in career mode. But an evaluation of over 100 million. Simon Kier was another member of Palermo's 09 10 campaign and still at an 80 overall at 35 years old. He'll be joining for 8 million from Batiste, another signing where the player had his contract expiring at the end of the season, reducing the overall fee that we had to spend. We'll face off against last year's Coppa Italia winners, Inter, for the first match of the season. And also changing formations to the 4 3 3 false 9 variant. Both Martino and Morales have great stats for wingers, so we're going to play them on both sides with Belotti in the center. And as we check in in January of 2025, we have seen a good outing in Syria, third place and only four points behind league leaders Napoli. I'm not going to say it was unexpected, but we were unable to advance out of our Champions League group, finishing last, which means that now the focus can be on Syria and maybe start building the squad for next season assuming we can qualify for Champions League again. If you're paying close attention, you might have noticed that Roma was outside the top eight teams in the league, so I felt like it was the perfect time to try to sign Brian Cristante. He's a popular player in career mode and also spent a year at Palermo while he was still a part of Benfica's squad, but he is basically a Serie A veteran, a product of AC Milan's Youth Academy. And for just under 30 million, we'll bring in a player that can play at center defense in mid, center back, or really anywhere in the midfield. We've addressed a lot of the weak points in the team, really just the right back position that needs some work. And we continue to have good form in the league, ultimately finishing third, qualifying for Champions League again next year. Malotti was clearly a big part of the squad's success. He was tied for first in goals with Vlahovic. Romeo also tied for most assists with Saka from Juve. It was Milan to win the Coppa Italia this time around. Liverpool winning Champions League. Sporting with a good victory over Arsenal in the Europa League. And Milan adding another trophy with the Europa Conference League. Now that Cavani's gone, it seems like Belotti has made up for all the goals. 22 from 44 appearances. Morales and Martino in the double digits. And I believe this is the first time where we actually had a player with double digits for assists. Romeo with 11 from 45. This is where our homegrown talent really starts to take off. No position changes or anything like that. 
just some great growth. And I do want to mention that this will be Sirigu's final season. At a 71 overall, he has served us very well in this rebuild, along with former club captain and original member of this creative club squad, Karl Schlimchak. But a slight drop in our manager rating, but nothing to be concerned about. Season 5 will again be a year of transition. Now that we know how good regions can be, we'll be on the search for Sirigu's regen. But now that we safely secured our place in Champions League, I think the move now has to be trying to win the league title and maybe reach the later stages of Champions League. A nice transfer budget of 58.6 million to work with. And here's a look at Sirigu's regen. Already at an 80 overall at just 17 years old. You already know he's got potential to be special as he'll earn the starting keeper spot. This is Slim Chalk's regen, not quite up to the same levels as Sirigu's regen, but still someone that can play a squad rotational role. Romeo has been one of the top players at the club, consistently racking up assists. And as a result of that, we received some notable bids from a few of Europe's giants, the most intriguing of which came for the Premier League Wolves, submitting an offer of 43.1 million. We were able to bring that fee up to 47 and a half million. I think even if he's been such a good player for the club, this is a transfer that we can't pass up on. In addition to that, Guardado will be leaving the club for 1.9 million. The funds that we received from those transfers, along with the transfer budget that we had to start with, will hopefully be enough to sign Paulo Dybala. It was always going to be an expensive transfer, but I didn't expect a nine digit fee. I think we had about 1 million left in the transfer budget after this deal, but this will be the biggest signing of the video, which is all right with me because Dybala is definitely one of Palermo's highest profile ex-players. A tough test to begin our season campaign. We'll see if the addition of Dybala will help us out at all in the midfield. Still a few defensive liabilities, but I'm hoping that the addition of Sirigu's regen Marini will help alleviate that in some ways. Checking in in January, we are top of Syria, a three-point lead over Sassuolo. Also finishing first in our Champions League group, which was a pleasant surprise. That'll fit us against RB Salzburg in the round of 16. Finally, we've got some good matchups and hopefully ones that we can win. We did see some player growth across the board, which left me with a lot of confidence heading into the knockout rounds of Champions League. The away fixture against RB Salzburg ending in a 2-1 victory and the home fixture ending 1-0, seeing us advance 3-1 on aggregate. Borussia Dortmund is up next and this is when things are going to start getting interesting. The home leg was a disappointing result, 3-1. And despite getting a win in the away fixture, it wasn't enough to bring things level on aggregate. So we'll see an exit in the quarterfinals of Champions League. At least us with one fixture left to play in Serie A, and it will be a deciding one. Three points will be enough for us to clinch a league title. A draw or a loss could also do it, but we would then be relying on a favorable Milan result. And another retiring player, this time it's Simone Kier. Unlucky to see that Pizzella was not available in our starting lineup. He must have picked up a red card in the previous match, leaving us with a 68 rated left back to fill in. But let's be real, it's our attack that is going to lead us to victories. And Andrea Bellotti starts us off on the right foot. Three minutes in, he's going to open up the scoring. The nice thing about Bellotti, he's got the five star weak foot. So no matter if it's on his left or if it's on his right, you can rely on him to usually get goals scored. But heading into the next highlight, it's going to be us again, just a few minutes later, some quick passing play, and we really should have made it two there with Morales. It falls to our homegrown town, the shot's deflected, and now it's going to be Bologna trying to get the equalizer. Good stop from Marini to kind of bring it down and then collect it himself. 23rd minutes, a lot of highlights here in the first half. It is Morales in a similar position as before, and again, it's going to be a shot denied. We'll see if Bologna have anything in the second half. And it's the 50th minute as Boussard with a shot on target. Marini with another save, showing his class despite just being a 17-year-old. Not something you see very often for keepers. They're usually breaking into the first team when they reach the early 20s. But throughout this match, we just could not get a second goal. And that ended up costing us because in the 71st minute, it's a cross sent in. And Timothy Wea, he seems to be following us everywhere as he was playing for Sampdoria in season two of the rebuild. We're going to get one final chance as the clock trickles down. And in the 89th minute, it's Martino played through, looks for the cross. It is defended well as Bologna get this one out of the box and away from danger. Ref is going to end up calling for full time. So just a draw. But as we wait on some of the other results around the league, it looks like a single point was enough for us to win the Serie A title. It was one of the main objectives for this rebuild. And the fact we were able to do it in Kier's final season as he is club captain. I don't think there can be a more perfect send off to his career. Also considering he's probably the final member 
of their 0910 campaign that is still in the game at this point. So now in future seasons, we can turn our focus towards other competitions like Champions League. Take a look at results around the league. It appears that Milan picked up a loss on their final match day. So the result didn't matter all that much for us, but Here's a look at some of the league top statistics. Martino leading in assists and Marini in his first season having the most clean sheets in Serie A. Juve picking up a victory in the Coppa Italia final. Champions League went to Liverpool over Borussia Dortmund, the team that defeated us. Chelsea with a 3-2 victory over PSG in the Europa League and Valencia winning the Europa Conference League. Goals were pretty well distributed across our front three, but Morales leads the club in goals 22 from 48. Martino getting the most assists, 18 from 49. And our new goalkeeper prospect, Marini, getting a plus three in his overall up to an 83. Not too much of a change to our manager rating, despite most of our objectives being failed. At this stage, it's just the departure of Kira that we need to make up for, as well as improving at the right back position. Board objectives not holding too much importance for me in the later stages of this rebuild, as we just try to win Champions League. And judging by our group, I think we've got a good chance of reaching the knockouts. This is a heavily improved Palermo squad, and we're going to continue those transfers with the 72 million in our budget. Here's Regen looks to be an incredible player, 18 years old, already an overall of 83, and an evaluation of 63.5 million. That's without any development plans added, and with how good the stopper and sweeper depth plans are, I wouldn't be surprised to see his rating increase even more. As far as right back goes, there's not a whole lot of ex-Palermo players that would make for a good signing in this rebuild, so instead, I've turned to a common nationality for the club, that being Brazil. Dudu is someone that I haven't signed yet in FIFA 22. Probably haven't signed him for a crew mode since FIFA 20. It's probably time for the Shakhtar Donetsk player to take the step up in his career as he'll sign for us at Palermo for 60 million. It is well above his market value, but it's going to help our chances of winning Champions League. We'll kick out the season in the Super Cup against Juventus, who won the Copa Italia last year. And the improvements that we made in the summer means that all of our players in the starting 11 are above 80 rated, even with a few in the 90s like Martino and Morales. Unfortunately, it was a loss in the Super Cup. Saka, Darwin, and Bellingham scoring the goals for Juve, Morales, and Belotti scoring goals for us. So we'll catch up in January. Serie A isn't as big of a focus. It would be nice to repeat in the league, but we are currently three points behind Milan for that top spot. Champions League, however, will be a big objective. We ended up finishing second in our group, equal on points with Hertha Berlin, but I think they got the better of us in head-to-head -head matchups, which means they finished ahead of us in the group. It's Real Madrid that we'll need to defeat in the round of 16, and we are experiencing some good growth for the squad. I was talking about how Christensen would see a rise to his rating. He's out plus three already to an 86. And we need as strong of a squad as possible to get by Real Madrid. It was a 1-1 result in the home leg and 1-0 in the away fixture. Pretty surprising result considering that Madrid dominated on statistics. But we're up against Manchester City in the quarterfinals. This one ending 1-0 at home and 3-2 away. A pretty entertaining match. And again, we're just so clinical with the few chances we get. It's another Manchester club in the semifinals. Manchester United... And the away fixture was a huge surprise at Old Trafford. We picked up a 4-0 victory off of four shots. That essentially will see us win on aggregate. It was a 1-1 draw in our home fixture. Our opponent for the final has been determined. It's Atletico Madrid. And this will also be the final match of the rebuild. We weren't able to repeat as Serie A champions. Milan coasting to a victory in Italy, but Champions League was always going to be our focus for us this year. It's tough to gauge what kind of formation Atletico Madrid will be using in-game, whether they're always going to have three center backs back or whether those wingers will drop and they'll have a defensive five. But I have faith in this Palermo squad. We've made some great signings up to this point, And of course, we've got the likes of our homegrown talents, Martino, as well as some regens that have seen incredible growth in their rating. We'll kick off the highlights with Morales being played through, spotting out Belotti in the middle, and in front of goal, you would have expected him to score, but Oblak being one of the best goalkeepers in FIFA 22, and right at his peak potential at this stage of the rebuild. It's going to be tough for us to score goals, but it is a surprise player that goes with a long shot. It took a deflection on its way in. Maybe that's the only way we're going to score goals past Oblak. I'll admit we had a lot of luck on our side throughout this rebuild, getting some surprise results, but you have to rate this effort from Harido. Kind of cool that one of our original creative club players ends up getting the opening goal in this Champions League final. But here's some good passing play in the middle. Dybala playing through Belotti again. Can he score this time around? No, he's denied once again from Oblak. Martino now from the left, Fanny Belotti plays through Morales, and this time we're going to double our lead. Although he plays as a winger for us, you cannot knock Morales' finishing ability. He is the regen of Edison Cavani after all. And now that we're comfortably ahead against Atletico Madrid, I felt like we could just play our style 
and pretty much open up opportunities, allowing our players to push up, play that high pressing play again. It was going to be Dybala that ends up with the ball playing through Brian Cristante. Don't know what he's doing in that sort of position, but it's a fantastic finish to make it three. Our center defensive mid was hungry for goals. It was part of the reason that we signed him. He's such a versatile player, even showcasing his finishing there. Defensively, we were sound. Marini has made some huge stops throughout this rebuild. I don't know if that effort went off the post or if Marini got a glove to it, but that is going to be full time. Three nil is how things end. I think six seasons was the perfect length for this rebuild. Otherwise, if we went on much further, we would have seen more players like Belotti and even Dybala retire within a few seasons. We got to experience some original members of Palermo's 0910 squad and even go on to see their regens be very successful. And as long as the regen system stays as it currently is, they'll be a big part of rebuilds this year. We'll get into an end of season recap. Martino again was a top goal scorer, ending four goals ahead of Lahovic to lead the league. Milan winning the Coppa Italia against Napoli. Again, it was a competition that went into penalties. Juventus winning the Europa League on penalties against Valencia and the Europa Conference League going to Everton. It's pretty impressive if you count up all the goals scored across all our players, but of course Martino did lead the way for the club, 36 from 56. Also first in assists with 12 from 56. Christensen, this is Kira's regen, saw plus five in his rating up to an 88. And board objective wise, we finished at a 73. Here's the final look at the Palermo squad. We had a few players that almost reached a 99 rating. Martino up to a 97, which I believe is equal with the highest rating I've achieved in career mode. Again, if you enjoy this sort of content, feel free to leave any club suggestion in the comments section as I plan on doing one of these realistic rebuilds about once a month. If you made it this far, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to y'all again soon.